Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week graduated from the University of Connecticut School of Dental Medicine and went on to the Yale-affiliated General Practice Residency. Prax from Sanford, Maine, please welcome Dr. Derek Jones, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Jones? Oh, it's going well. It's a beautiful day here in Maine. Uh, gorgeous weather, sun's out, it's, uh can't complain. Oh, that's so cool, dude. I love Maine lobster, man. That's my heck. I, I think I, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what we're known for. Yeah, you know, it's just such a, it's the cold water. I mean, there's so many different, you got Australian lobsters, you got different California spiny tail lobster, but live Maine lobster, sure. I'm kind of a connoisseur when it comes to lobsters. <laughs> and bigger is not better. I, I go to Vegas every once in a while and they have these lobsters flowing yep. in from Maine and they got five pounds or six pounders but i think the one and a quarter to two pounders are like the sweetest and best tasting lobsters <laughs> yeah they're they're something uh yeah my wife and i were not really big uh big lobster eaters um go figure can but you, uh can you believe I, that? I, I, no, yeah that's what we're known for <laughs> <laughs> yeah my wife i was t- telling her the other day man we're eating and uh I had like lobster, I had like this crab, then I had like the stone uh, stone crab, and I told her, yep. honey, we've been together like 35 years, been married 33 years or whatever, but I go, to think of the hundreds of thousands of dollars you have saved me through all these years that she doesn't like seafood, and she never did. I'm always the seafood. <laughs> she's kind of like chicken breast steamed and, you know, healthy stuff, and she's still sure. she's still at a buck five from, you know, 1984, 82, and I'm like 255. You know, it's like, what happened, man? But not the shell. I don't think the shellfish put on the weight. It's probably all that that beer that chased it and, you know, just the good times, but no. yeah, it's one of those things. You either love it or you don't, um, seafood. Yeah. It's crustaceans. I mean, I like, uh, yeah, it's just a trip, man. I, um, I don't like sushi though. You know, I can't eat any sushi or nothing, but, uh, you know, um, you gave me those shrimp and scallops and all that stuff, but, uh, yeah. Kind of neat stuff. I'm getting excited. I think I'm gonna go to crab cooker at lunch. No, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have dungeon as crab. Oh, and, uh... Make me hungry. Yeah, that's <laughs> right about lunchtime here. So. Uh... Ah, uh, that's so cool. Well, thank you so good. much, man, for coming on board. I know how busy you are, and I can't thank you for all the work. And uh, you know, I always like start oh, off. I always like start off a little bit about sports. And uh, you watch any of that U.S. Open golf over the weekend at all? Oh no, I'm. Uh, I have to be the ten percent of dentists that don't actually <laughs> golf. Or golf. Uh, uh, I grew up playing ice hockey, so that's always uh, been my sport. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. I started off. Uh, you know, through college, I followed college basketball, pro basketball, uh, football, hockey. And as the years have drawn on and I've gotten, uh, let's just say, less and less free time, um, I've whittled it down to pretty much just watching a little bit of the Bruins here and there. There you go. Um, Boston Bruins, um, baby. Sports. Yeah, we have the mighty yeah. ducks out, mighty ducks out here, and, uh, and we got the LA Kings. But we're we're Orange County. We're we're like a different state from LA, I think. And it's just, uh, yeah, we watched the ducks since they started, and they got Southern California. I mean, Wayne Gretzky back in the day came to the Kings, and they got all us. I remember. Yeah, yeah. got all us interested. Yeah. But what a what a great sport that is. I mean, even my kids when they're growing up, our two boys, we would do the hockey with uh, our rollerblades and. The knuckle puck, man, we'd have those pucks and, you know, then we went to the balls and I got it to where you could do it like a slap shot about a foot off the ground and take them out at the shins. And uh, <laughs> they, they started doing it to me. So I learned how I to do it so that. I could do it back. And, oh, man, we were so brutal. We had to start wearing helmets, man, because we didn't want to get yeah, in the face. I mean, I, I'm a little envious of your weather out there. I know you guys could probably year round uh, do roller hockey and, and yeah. be outside. You know, it's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. That's but, really cool. Now nah, that's awesome, dude. Well, yeah, anyway, I just why I'm not a big golfer either. I, I play a little bit, but heck, I've I'm just in awe of some of these guys playing and uh 
Yeah, the Dustin Johnson, I think it was. And then this one dude, he won it last year and he won it again this year. So a young 28 year old kid and Conky or whatever his name was, but man, what a player. And it just seeing it, uh, I think it was out in Long Island somewhere at this course, and they mm-hmm. got a bunch of static on Saturday because it was so fast and it was unplayable almost. I mean, that's the first wow. first time I ever seen where it's all plus eight, plus seven. I mean, there was no minus, you know, like under par, and it was yeah. like everyone's shooting like eighties and seventy sevens, and I'm like, hey, it's kind of like uh, they're mortal, you know. But then the next day they're <laughs> down to the sixty threes, and the guy almost hit a sixty two. This dude from yeah. England had long hair but it was just enjoyable to watch it and kind of neat you know um to see yes yeah, yeah. sure it's, uh, it's always great to see a young guy uh win it and you know it must be so exciting for him and uh, yeah and it's that, a so. it's a trip well cool We're man we'll, we'll get in the meat yeah. and bones of this now so all right dr sure. jones let's dental up mm-hmm. why did you get into That's dentistry right. and at what point did you think i want to be a dentist uh, um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, as, as a kid, I was one of those kids that, uh, enjoyed going to the dentist. I liked getting my teeth cleaned. I was always interested in it. Okay. Um, but I never really, uh, seriously considered it till, uh, uh, probably about my sophomore, junior year of college, um, as a biology major, And I was getting to that point where I was thinking, what could I do with this degree? And uh, I went through a few different options. Uh, I I gotta say, I think what cinched it was I spent a summer doing an internship with a dentist down there, uh, talking to him, um, sitting chairside with him. uh, And by the end of that, I think is when I said I want to be a dentist. No uh, that was, yeah, that, that decided it for me. That's so cool. Now tell me, you went to Connecticut School of Dental Medicine. Tell me a little bit about your journey yep. in college and where uh, you did your undergraduate. Um, where, tell me a little bit about your college sure. journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did my uh, undergraduate at University of Rhode Island. Uh I started off as a uh, undecided uh, okay. major and uh, took a few gen eds. Uh, I always would gravitate towards the sciences like the bio. Um, so I, I chose biology as a major. Um, I worked hard, I made good grades. And uh, then probably about my sophomore, junior year is when I decided to think of what I could do with this degree. Uh, because I really didn't care to be a be a, a lab tech or uh, something like that, so I kind of knew I had to go on and uh, and further my education. No kidding. Um, so yeah, that's that's about when I uh, I chose dentistry. And the nice thing about bio is I had most of the gen eds taken care of, and uh, just had to take a few others, take a test, apply. Got that's you know, awesome. Got this it. history. I uh I watch a show I didn't know what it was because I'm such an idiot. Uh, it's called AP Bio and it's on TV. It's funny as hell, man. It's this teacher. And it's uh I'm like, what's AP? So it's Advanced Placement Placement Biology, right? <laughs> like, I was, oh, it's on television. That's <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's just a show about some knucklehead teacher with this smart class of students and uh, but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I never was in any AP classes. I was physical edge. If I was going to be a major, if I ever went to college, I would be a physical education major. I remember back in the days <laughs> watching all the football games and <clears throat> every one of those athletes in the 70s, all their major was physical education. And then I think they stopped that or something. But all the guys, yeah, physical education. Let me go to PE, baby. <laughs> yeah, that was that was everybody's favorite class growing up. <laughs> yeah, it was. Elementary school. Everybody loved PE. Uh, it's so crazy. I remember my biggest scare was – after uh, elementary school, you know, we had junior high at seventh and eighth grade here, then high schools ninth through twelfth. And so when you got a sixth grade, you knew that you're going to the junior high and then you had to do PE, you know, as one of your 
classes each day. You know, you have seven classes sure. or whatever. And uh, you have to go shower after PE, buck ass naked. And uh, <laughs> it's like, I was just the scariest thing for us back then. But after the first few times, you know, you did it. You, know, you did it all the way through high school. And, you know, you shower the football team. I remember getting in trouble where I actually had to take a toothbrush and go into that shower in high school. <laughs> it was like a senior year. <laughs> I forgot what I carved my initials on the training table, you know, SK 44 is my football number and they were so pissed oh. at me. So I, I got a couple swats and then, uh, I, I got, yeah, that's crazy. They were, they were allowed to spank you, swat you no. in junior high right. in high school. And then, uh, they made you, they made me clean the showers for like an hour for one of my periods, uh, in there, you know, Get in there and go clean the shower. So I'm in there and all the guys are laughing. But uh Yeah, I bet. I hope you got some credit with your fellow football <laughs> players for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of just came out of nowhere. I kind of forgot about that. But uh yeah. <laughs> what a life. Story. <laughs> uh so tell me, I see you attended the Yale affiliated general practice. Is that like Yale University or uh you know, credited with it? Or tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, it was a general practice residency. It was at uh, St. Mary's Hospital in Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, and the program itself had a Yale affiliation. So, uh, But we weren't actually at uh, Yale University. Okay. It was just a hospital that uh, – it was a teaching hospital. They had uh, the dental residency. They had um, several medical residencies there. Uh, I think internal medicine, uh, surgery, and uh, the Yale uh, postdocs would uh, rotate through. Okay. So it was, it was a good time. I, I I really enjoyed it. I had some great co-residents, uh, great memories coming out of there. We worked hard, but we also got into some hijinks and things from here to there. And uh, it was uh, it was a very fun year for yeah. me. That was that was my first year after I graduated dental school before I started working in the real world <laughs> that's awesome no man you had a good you yeah. know good a good setup and everything and you, you just had a good you know good feeling for it and everything else some guys are like eh, it was a nightmare this and that but um that's no, awesome they enjoyed was, it yeah it was a good group i mean uh, the guys kind of made it if you have good co-residents you have a good experience um i could take it if you had a few you know not so great uh residents or maybe a jerk or two in there yeah uh, could spoil your time, I'm sure. Absolutely. So tell me, when you got done with that, so did you start out as an associate or did you purchase a practice? Tell me a little bit about that. I did a lot. Uh, I eventually purchased. I'm an owner right now uh, with my wife, who's also a practicing dentist, and we've owned for five years. Um, but prior to that, uh, I worked probably uh, six years after residency and I worked, uh, I worked a corporate job. I worked, um, several associateships and right before purchasing, I worked in public health. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. A little bit of everything. So it, I, I got to say, uh, you know, each different, uh, type of dentistry I was practicing each different area, uh, definitely learned a little bit, um, Saw some good, definitely saw some bad as well. And, uh, you know, all those different experiences kind of molded and molded me into the clinician I am now. Um, helped me decide how I want to practice. That's yeah, awesome. it, was, it was experience. That really is to go ahead and just, you know, get in the trenches in a couple different couple different areas, you know, with different companies and stuff and just to feel it out and then open your own. So when you open your own, yeah. did you and um, your wife, you know, your doctor wife, your wife's uh, yep. a dentist also. Tell me a little bit about that. How did yep. you guys meet? Did you meet in dental school or did you meet at, tell us how that worked out and how, how it is working with your wife in your practice. Oh yeah. So uh, Liz and I met uh, when she was a resident at St. Francis Hospital and I was working at a practice in uh, Southern Rhode Island. And uh, we met through a mutual friend, one of my good buddies from dental school, a great guy. Uh, he was up practicing in Bangor, Maine, and I was in Southern Rhode Island. Uh, so we never got to really hang out. He started dating one of Liz's co-residents at... Um, the St. Francis Hospital in Hartford, Connecticut. So he would go down and visit her. And while he was there, I was probably about 45 minutes away. So he'd give me a call 
and be like, Hey, I'm close by. Do you want to hang out? So, you know, I find myself going up there, uh, you know, every couple weekends or so and hanging out and, uh, at a Christmas party, um, I sat next to, to Liz and, uh, we just started talking, hanging out. Um, we ended up, uh, exchanging phone numbers. Uh, we were hanging out as friends for a while and then, uh, you know, it just it evolved. And, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, destiny, yeah. man. That's how uh, it happened. It works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> met her at a, uh, at a Christmas party. I met mine at a, at a Halloween party, man. It's just weird how oh, things cool. work. It's, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's all yeah, destiny. You, you, never, you never expect it. It just, uh, I don't know, it's just, just happens and it, it worked out really well but we, a lot of our patients ask if we met at school met at residency but um we actually went to different schools different residencies graduated different years and uh we just met through uh through mutual friends no kidding so what are what are her strengths and your strengths how do you guys bounce things off each other how do you how do you work the practice a little bit she doing more of the back in and certain procedures you're doing things tell me a little bit of how it works out between the two. Oh, that's a good question uh we um we divide up probably uh, a lot of the administrative duties uh, okay. for one so you know she'll take care of payroll i'll take care of invoices um and uh she'll manage hygiene and department and i'll help manage the front desk which is really very helpful and clinically it also works out really well because we have different interests. Uh, she likes surgery, so she does almost all the extractions uh, and some implant placement. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, She's got the great. wiggles, man. She's in there pulling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, dude. Yeah, she is. She's a gutsy girl, uh, and she's great at it. So, <laughs> That's so cool. yeah, and and uh, and but she doesn't like root canals, and I like to do the root canals. So I do the root canals. She does the extractions. And uh, it works out. It's it's really it's really a nice thing to uh, to be able to divide like that. Oh, it is, it's really man. Cool. That's that's cool, dude. I really I really love hearing that. So tell me a little bit about on um, the layout of your practice. How has it grown over the years? Just tell me a little bit. Um, assistance, hygiene. Tell me tell me what you got rolling in your practice, or if you could. Um, that that's actually an interesting question because recently, within the last two months, we've moved to a new building. Oh, so okay. it's, I guess it, you could say it's changed a lot. Uh, but five years ago, we started off in a condo complex. Uh, it was about 1,700 square feet. We had five treatment rooms. Um, I want to say our, sa our staff was about six okay. people. Um, over the last five years, we've steadily grown. We've added staff. I think we're up to 11 staff members now. Uh, and we recently just uh, built, uh, completed a ground up construction. Oh, you're so kidding. we bought land. Yeah, it was, it's quite the project. Kept us really busy last year. And we moved uh, 3,500 square feet now. We're yeah. eight treatment rooms. Yeah, it's really a. It's blown us up, up, baby. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> no wonder you guys are crushing it, man. No, that's, that's it gets, so cool. It gives us the elbow room. <laughs> yeah. So we're not bumping into each other. Um, the layout, uh, let's see. Um, we have a big waiting room area, um, high ceilings. Uh, we have uh, our front desk is made of reclaimed uh, main barn wood. Yeah. Um, cool yeah eight eight rooms uh in a circle staring out over the pines um, oh you're kidding who helped you design yeah. that you get someone out like from shine or someone or how'd you design that you oh uh, we had we had a lot of help uh we had a uh, had shine helped a lot with the floor plan uh mm -hmm. we had an architect design the rest of it and uh we had a really great uh gc that helped a lot he took uh he he did an amazing job, I gotta say. Um, Stuart Mitchell, SJM Construction. Uh, he was there every step of the way, from planning to purchasing the land to to all the options we went through before we decided to just do complete brand new ground up construction. Okay. He was even yeah yeah. We were looking at uh, purchasing an existing commercial building and um, refurbishing it. 
um, yeah, we, and we went through a lot of options. Uh, and he was there. He was very helpful. Um, Tell me a little bit about with with on the land. So you bought the land or you buy uh, any, like, is it a strip mall area, a freeway? Do you have a good signage, visibility? Tell me a little bit how you picked it out and why you picked it out, the area that you placed your practice in. We, uh, the spot we picked out, it was just um, a vacant lot that was there. It was about one and a half acres. Oh, okay. um, the location we liked because it was near, uh, it was near a, a rotary in town. And this rotary in Sanford is, um, well, to kind of understand Sanford, uh, Sanford's kind of a, it's a, a service hub in Maine. Uh, so there's a lot of really rural communities surrounding okay. and they kind of come into Sanford for their services. Now, this land we purchased is on a rotary in town, which is kind of like where um, several of these areas converge in. So that's that's what we liked about the location. We thought we'd be real easy for um, for some patients in surrounding communities like North Berwick and South Sanford and Wells uh, to to reach us and get to us, and uh, and it was visible. Our former location was in a like a condo complex or a okay. little tucked away. We had very small signage. Um, you know, I, I guess we still grew uh, even even with that. But now we have a uh, very visible location. It's convenient to get to. It's very easy access in and out. Uh, it's not a super busy road where patients have trouble turning on. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, basically near that rotary in town was okay. uh, was where we like to move. We, we were eye, eyeing around there. That's so cool. I mean, that just, it's a leap of faith the way you go buy the, buy the land and build up from the ground up. That's just awesome, dude. Yeah, it was a project. Uh, <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, uh, we were working out all last year. It's hard not to get distracted while, uh, you know, you're trying to keep things in your current practice going, but you have a, you know, this thing on the side that you're trying to get, make decisions about and stuff. So. Well, that's so cool yeah. that you did it, man. You've built it. They will come, man. And I'm telling you, that's what I said when I built this. I just kept saying it to my wife. She goes, okay, Sean, I've heard it. But, God, I just think back now. This was back in 2004 when I built this uh, lab. Um, mm -hmm. God, it's just balls. I don't know. If I thought about it, I wouldn't have done it. I remember signing so many papers, getting a couple million dollars in loans and building out, you know, 30,000 square feet and just, wow. it's just, uh, it's yeah, it's kind of nuts. Huge <laughs> facility. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, but uh, <laughs> I did it and built it and they came. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, tell me a little bit about your marketing strategy. Do you do mailers? Are you doing any social media, working with the public sector? Tell me a little bit about that and what you do to drive patients to your practice? Um, well, uh, we, we have a Facebook. Uh, okay. We have a website. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't really do direct mailers. Um, I got to say, I don't really do any other kind of direct advertising. Uh, we go by, by word of mouth. Um, even our Facebook page, I primarily use just for updating patients of what's new in our practice, um, you know, hiring a new staff member. Um, definitely when we had the construction project going on, just to keep people informed. Um, some of the more interesting things we do, I know we did, um, oh God, they, uh, they unearthed uh, a cadaver building, some building around here. And uh, Liz and I were brought in by the historical society to to review some of the the fragments so, i mean we put that just in, interesting stuff i guess on yeah. our facebook uh and our website um probably could use a little updating i'll uh, put that on the list to do but we do yeah. have a, a website never ending man it's like <laughs> That's what they always tell me. You got to update your website. I said, dude, I've done this like 15 times in the last 14 years. I'm like, come on. It's just, I don't know. It's, I know. It's, it goes on the list and you get busy and uh, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's fine, you know, but uh, so tell me a little yeah. bit about 
your CE journey. Um, do you do much CE locally? Do you go out to any of the different conventions? I bet I bet you do the Yankee convention out there because uh, I love the Yankee. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, we uh, we definitely do Yankee. Uh, usually bring our whole staff. Uh, it's uh, you know, as you know, Yankee Dental's the big New England Dental Conference. Yeah. Uh, end of February, um, January. end of January, yeah. or early February, kind of thing. Uh, and um, so we'll, we'll bring our staff there. We'll, our staff will do the CE. Um, it's fun to walk around the floor, see the latest technologies. You know, nice. kind of write your wish lists. Yeah. Um, and Liz and I also travel a bit for our CE. Um, some of the better CE we found, uh, we've had to travel for. I know I've traveled down to Philadelphia uh, for, um, you know, I did a great uh, course there on root canals uh, called Next Level Endodontics. Oh, okay. uh, but, yep. Uh, Liz has been to the Dominican Republic with GARG and done the implants. So we did the implant seminar a few years ago. It came to Boston. Uh, usually what Liz and I, oh, and we're members of the Spear Study Club. Ah, beautiful. Um, Frank Spear. You got to love him. Oh, he's great. <laughs> yeah, he's knowledge, such a knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable clinician. That's so cool. I love hearing that. I've never met him, and I got a lot of my doctors that go see him, and we actually get uh, a few of the podcasts we're doing are sponsored with Spear Education. But uh, yeah, you can't go wrong. Oh, right. You know, it's always it's always good to learn, and you might as well learn from the best. And uh, that's that's really neat that you all the way from freaking the other side of the United States. And now you're talking about spirit. It's all the way over here in Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> all places, <laughs> man. That's so cool. But yeah, I, I love your area. You know, I always, we have a, a bug, bunch of uh, doctors, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Boston. Yep. It's just, That's it's right. just a, it's just a neat area. And um, just love the dentist out in that area. They're all good people. And, that's just awesome. So when you see some of the new uh, mm -hmm. new gizmos out there, anything on your mind? You're thinking about a impression scanner? you thinking anything, uh, uh, you know, impressions or, you know, CAD cam chair side? Or what's what's your uh, piece of equipment you have uh, your eyes on? Anything uh, in the near future? Oh, our, our wish list? Uh, let's see. Um, I know my wife really wants a cone beam. Okay. <laughs> I'm eyeing a microscope, so we're probably going to have to uh, have a little uh, battle each other out over that one. No uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, probably uh, a cone beam is going to be, or a 3D um, X-ray is going to be our next purchase. Um, we recently just purchased almost entirely new equipment for the office, 99%. Uh, so tell me any amazing or wild dental stories you've had concerning some patients in your chair, anything uh, in your young career, any, any good stories that we're able to tell? <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Um, you know, there's, there's always so much, uh, yeah. throughout the day, there's always something <laughs> or nothing that, you know, comes, strikes me as a little kooky or whatever. Um, uh, you know, there is, um, a time I was a resident, um, I was working on a patient. I was making him uh, a lower partial with a metal base. Okay. And uh, I went in the room and I was trying in the framework. So I remember, you know, trying in, it fitting well. Uh, I got pulled out of the room. I had to go do a few other things. And I came back and I dismissed the patient. And uh, about uh, a week or two later, uh, he shows up in my schedule and, um, you know, I go in the room and he's like, well, this partial fits really well, but there's no teeth on it. <laughs> oh, he wore it all that time? So, yeah, he was wearing it, <laughs> taking it in and out and uh, I guess tried to use it. So <laughs> yeah, I threw some wax on it, had him bite, went out to the lab, uh, put some teeth on it. <laughs> uh you, you ended up liking it ended up working out well oh, and man. i ended up uh getting a lot of flack i would say for my co-residents uh they, <laughs> they busted my chops for that one for a for a good long time it was embarrassing uh, uh, i could definitely laugh about it now but uh 
Yeah, that was that was a interesting story. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me, what kind of advice can you give some of our newer dentists just starting off? Uh, I would say uh, work hard and uh, don't rush. You know, take your time. Um, spend your first few, few years of practice um, learning the kind of dentistry you want to do, how you want to practice, and uh, and then going for it. Um, you know, I, when I first graduated dental school, it's really hard to, to fully know real world dentistry and how you want to do it. So, you know, don't rush, take your time, connect with colleagues, um, join your dental societies and, um, and treat patients. Right. Absolutely. What about, what about any do's and don'ts? <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> You know, actually, another thing that would uh, that's uh, I would think would be good advice is uh, develop a good work life balance. I, I know that seems um, obvious, but uh, as you kind of get caught up in the career and and everything, and you start to grow, it's it's easy to lose sight of. It, it can be easy to lose sight of who you are. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, don't forget your hobbies, your outside interests. Um, if you have a family, um, don't forget to, to spend a lot of time with them. And don't forget to take time off of the office when you need it. Uh, time for vacation, time to reconnect, rejuvenate, um, and uh, no, that is take so care huge. of yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, I, in any job, anything, you got to find that balance and Sometimes it's tough with people having to work, you know, more than one job or if it's one job, they just you got to find that life balance, man, with family and, you know, just your faith, everything. You just because you can burn out, you can burn out in any job, but um, dentistry can be, yeah. you know, really taxing on you guys. And just because you're just working on people all day, every day. And it's usually I don't know, it's just it's just something that um, it can wear on you if you don't really kind of just take care of yourself and really, you know, balance out your lifestyle. Yeah. So, so important. Absolutely. So. Well, dude, that's awesome, man. So would you recommend this dental profession to your son or daughter if they were going to pursue a career, uh, this as a career choice? I, my daughter's uh, two right now, and she <laughs> seems to be uh, <laughs> she seems to be really into animals. So I picture her being a little veterinarian. But uh, you know, if um, if if she uh, if she wanted to do dentistry and had a had a legit interest in it, I would uh, I would definitely support her um, 100. Uh, percent It's uh, it's a very rewarding profession. Um, it's very intellectually stimulating. Uh, you get to help people and that's, uh, that's the best part. So I would, uh, I would support her. I don't think I would ever really, um, try to sway her or, or lean her towards this. Um, I mean, just the way I, I operate, I yeah. want her to make her own, own decision. Uh, and yeah, you know, obviously, uh, no matter what she wants to do, i gonna support her yeah that's a good way to so, think some yeah. of us fathers <laughs> like you're gonna be a football player you know come on and you try to sure. live through but i wasn't one of those fathers i i mean it i wasn't <laughs> especially when they ended up five foot nothing and a hundred nothing you ain't going to the next level baby <laughs> uh, and those C's ain't going to get you into no uh, Ivy League school or anything. You're going to go to a, going to go to a JUCO, <laughs> JC. Uh, yeah. No, that's that's what you got to do. It's it's a trip. Now I heard there's a town. You said earlier, a town Wells by you. Is that the name of the town? Uh yeah, yeah. Oh. That's next town over from Sanford. What a trip! My I have a grandson. We had uh, my son had and his wife. Six months ago, so he's six yesterday on Father's Day, and but his name's Wells. It's kind of uh, she's from North Carolina. I guess it's a maybe it's Southern name or something, but uh, Wells. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a little yeah, different. That's that's a cool name. Wells Keating. Well, can, it's actually a town we live in. My wife and I live in Wells. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome, man. It's like yeah, Wells. That's a different name. I was thinking like, well, don't say hell's bells. There's wells, you know, or something. But uh, <laughs> we better cut that out. I don't want them to hear that. I, I my wife said, don't ever say that to them, okay? With and I'm like, okay, I won't. I do it on a podcast. 
David, cut that. That's cool. It's cool to be different, though. It's yeah. cool to have a different name. Yeah, it's totally. Yeah, it's gonna be. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I've never heard any other whales, but um, yeah, it's a little different Sweet. for sure. Well, that's so awesome, dude. So, uh, tell me about your work week. What are you doing? What are you doing five days a week, three days a week? Tell me your work schedule, how you work, and um, are both you and your wife on f- full each day, or some take time off? Yeah, tell me, tell me how you do your schedule. Oh, uh, let's see. I work uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so Tuesday, Wednesday, I work eight to five. Thursday, Friday, I'm eight to four. Uh, my wife works uh, full day Monday. Okay. So she's there right now, actually working. Yeah. And Mom was yeah. working. Daddy's going on a Monday. <laughs> That's his perks. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, yeah. uh, she works half day Tuesday. She works um, Thursdays and she works Fridays. No kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I actually, I pick up a lot of Mondays. Um, as our schedule gets full and busy, uh, there's patients that pop in with emergencies, things that really can't wait a couple weeks to be okay. seen. So I actually end up coming in a lot of Mondays. Uh, today I do a lot of um, procedures that I don't want the patient to, to sit on or Okay. Or wait with. Um, so I actually I do a lot of crowns on uh, teeth that break on Mondays, um, and I do a fair amount of root canals on Mondays. You know, uh, during the week, if things pop up and need to be taken care of, I'll come in and take care of it. If not, I have a nice, a nice day off. Uh, I also play hockey, and yeah. I try to fit that in on Mondays. Now I take it. It's ice hockey, not speak. roll. It's not like rollerblade hockey, right? <laughs> no, no, it's it's ice hockey. Uh, okay. <laughs> nothing against roller hockey, but um. No, that's awesome, dude. That's good conditioning and everything else, and you got to put all the pads on and all that. I'm sure you do, but uh, I bet you're in yeah. good shape, man. Just keep doing that stuff. Keeps me in shape. <laughs> yeah, keeps me in shape. Uh, clears the head, breaks up the day. Uh, oh. Sometimes I'll even go back in the afternoon and see some patients. I love it. No um, kidding. Now, uh, I heard you got a dog named Kobe. My son's got a dog named Kobe. What kind of dog you got? Uh, Kobe? Co- yeah. We actually have three. Uh, Kobe's a Bichon Poodle. Oh, you're kidding. And, okay. uh, yeah, he's he's our old man. He's uh, th- uh, thir- 12 or 13 oh, years old. Oh, you're kidding. That's so cool. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. We have two rescues, too, uh, Cooper Sammy. Um, we got them uh, from a shelter in Louisiana. And they brought him up to Maine. We adopted him. Uh, my wife and I were really into uh, pet rescue. Wow, um, good for you. Yeah, I love yeah. that. My wife. It's yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, we love our our animals. Um, they keep us uh, keep us grounded. Oh heck yeah! Uh, I love it. Yeah. I have dogs too, and I love those dogs. Sometimes I say more of my children, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love, I love my kids. I love my boys, but uh, yeah, those dogs are just the greatest things, man. But um, it's sad as they get older. I mean, we've been together so long. We've been through dogs, and it's like every 10, 12 years, like, oh, no. It's like, don't leave us, and it just hits us hard, man. I just hate it. And then I went out this last time. Yeah. My dog passed away about a year and a half ago, and uh-huh. it was like, what the heck? And for about six months, I'm just coming home from work every day, and my wife Shannon is like, hi. And, I mean, she was real happy, you know. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't. Uh-huh. I was like, come on. So I, I came home with two dogs, and I was like, I thought you are going to divorce me after all these years. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> and it's been a year now. They just turned a year old. And, uh, oh, I – she she loves them. I mean, of course she loves everything, but I just I got to come home to my doggies and like you know I just I just love having them and it's a trip. But these the first time in all my years that I actually had to put an effort of raising them from the beginning because I brought them and she said you're doing everything and she literally meant that and I have and I think I've dropped a bunch of weight because these little things keep me moving and can't let them just go roam around the house and chew everything and it's been a tough oh, year yeah. it's been a tough year what? but uh <laughs> oh little what, hellions what kind of dogs do you have uh they're little French bulldogs but um We've always had bulldogs. I've had had English bulldog Rocky, and then he's my first one. Then I got Buster, and you know about, and we had those guys, and so we just got some more Frenchies, and these ones are like Mm -hmm. they're cousins, you know, and they're like 
they just like from the wrong side of the tracks when they come around the corner and see each other, they kind of like, let's wrestle and oh, they get uh, after it. And so they're starting to mature and get better now, but, uh, yeah, it's still great. You know, we love them, but, uh, I see it too. Um, you know, some of my friends do rescues and it's just, uh, yeah, I'm really into helping out the dog shelters around us where we live and whatever we can do. Cause it's, it's just a sad sight. What's going on with a lot of these dogs and you know, the kill sh- shelters and stuff like that. There's just so many dogs that are out there available. And it's like, you know, I almost yeah. feel guilty when I, Oh yeah, I'm got a friend. She's like, yeah, you know what? Why don't you go get, I know it's just, uh, it's, it's tough when you know, there's so many dogs out there and, so I kind of kid around with some of the people. They said, where'd you get them? I go, oh, we, these are shelter dogs. They go, really? Where'd you get them? What shelter? And I'm like, oh, I'm just kind of getting there. But uh, it's just um, not good for you, dude. That's awesome. So tell me, um, how did you how did you find out about my lab? And um, how are we doing as a lab for you? Are we doing okay? We screw things up every once in a while? Or how are we doing? No, you guys are doing great. Uh, I... I originally uh, when I purchased this practice from uh, the former dentist, Dr. Daigle, uh, he was using you guys, Keating Dental Arts. Yeah. What a trip, Dr. Daigle. I didn't even put that together. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, when, uh, yeah, I just kind of, um, you know, started uh, prepping crowns and uh, the uh, assistants would bring me the the Keating sheet and yeah. you know I gave you guys a try and uh your work was good you know, oh, crowds so were going in well contacts are good um seating was good communication was great uh so actually one thing I like that you guys do is um i've been doing this recently for some of my anterior work uh where it's real difficult to get an exact shade match like a a lone central uh things like that i've been taking uh, some clinical photos just of the teeth and sending them to you guys and some of the oh it's great uh, the characterizations and the details that you add to make them um blend in yep. with the rest of the teeth uh is is amazing and, that's so huge yeah i'm glad you do that yeah. because we can i mean you know we can do those single centrals and and nail it first time you know with a great picture you know a picture's worth a thousand words and we can really break it down and especially when you know you're going to the stump shade a little bit maybe given that even and then adjacently do we have natural dentition or do we have restorations are we matching off a of pfm or an all ceramic there's a lot to mm-hmm. it but um to not have us chair side to be able to do a custom shade is you know, take a camera, take a pic and send it to shade at Keating Dental Arts. And uh, it works. It works real well. And, you know, uh, it's like sometimes, man, I don't get pictures or nothing. It's like, dude, just just do the whole front six. I'll, I'll do it because I don't want to go back forth. And I don't want this thing to look like a headlight. Too many times I see people with oh, yeah. front crowns, you know, if it's one, it's two. You know, it's like, ah, oh, dude, you, it's just the match isn't there. But not saying with my crowns, we try to match them. But hey, I've had some ringers. I've had some crowns two, three, four times, and internally, you know, doing stuff here, and especially when there's just so much characterization and you know the depth of color, you got to really be able to, you know, use opaque modifiers and different sizeal translucencies, and it's tough. It's so tough, and it's just like sometimes I, I want to throw in the towel and just say please just let me do, you know, at least eight, nine, if it's just one, it's always nice to do both of them. But when you got natural dentition, that's beautiful. You don't want to mess with that. So I understand it, but pictures worth a thousand words, man. And, uh, that's, that's awesome that you're, you know, using that to help utilize our, you know, services here to, cause it's important. Let's get these crowns done the first time. Cause when that comes that's back, yeah, so, so important. It really is patient, especially. I mean, they want to be in and out of that chair. They don't want to come back a second and third time. And, you know, it's just time is money. You know, someone's in that chair or not, it's probably three to $500 an hour to run that chair, you know. And so when you start getting people back and forth and they get mad at the lab and they get mad at you and it's just, it's tough. So, cause we both, we both work for the patient. So we got to make sure we take care of that patient. And that's the way we always feel here. So Make Absolutely, sure right, baby. But hey, Doctor Jones, you are the man, man. I can't thank you enough for well, coming you. in and doing this and taking the time and tell your wife, sure. Doctor Elizabeth Jones, thank you for all the work she does. If you guys need anything, please let us know. And uh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. 
Absolutely. Thank you. It was, uh, it was good talking to you. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. You're the man. And thank you. If you need anything, let us know. You need something done in a day, you know, or anything rushed, just say, hey, Sean said it. We'll never charge you extra on those rushes. You know, sometimes you have patients that got to get back and get to crowns and just let me know. I mean, it's not like two when we do a one day crown or two day. It's like it's like a football team, man. It comes in, it goes to the, you know, the, it goes to the front line, it goes to your defensive backs and offense coordinator. And we put it all together and we get it done. And it's just, uh, it's just a, a neat process how we do it. And um, so it's just something we have always available. If you ever need something that's needs to be done quicker, please let us know and we'll take care of you for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I'd love to visit that lab if I'm ever out in California. 30,000 oh. square feet. That sounds pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so. awesome. It's a it's a beautiful laboratory, and um, we have a full operatory here, too, and um, we do a lot of live programs. And so, yeah, we'll have to get a list out of some of the different programs. We'd love to have you and the wife out. Bring your daughter. We got Disneyland right around the corner. Heck, we got Knott's awesome. Berry Farm. We got all the little beaches and We'll hook you up, baby. We'll take care of you. That's awesome. for sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Dr. Jones. Hey, have a great day. And um, again, thank you so much, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. No problem. It was great talking to you. Thanks again. All right, Dr. Jones. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Love Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Love Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.